due to the interest of national security, the Kerbal Space Program was shut down. The United Republic of Agara now was in direct control over their own space program. They then announced to the world that the probe that was on the moon was rightfully theirs and that no other nation should try to recover it. But the nations of the world disagreed. They proclaimed that the probe belonged to the Kerbal Space Program, an agency residing within the URA, and that the Kerbal Space Program had already announced that the probe belonged to the first nation that could recover it, which was exactly what they were going to do. Thanks to the fact that the Kerbal Space Program shared many of their technologies before they were taken over by the government, the Allied Mountain States started to build their very first Luna Lander. The United Republic of Agara and the Mountain States found themselves in a space race. Whichever nation recovered the probe first would not only have the enormous amount of scientific data that the probe had collected, but also that nation would be recognized by the world as a new absolute space power. However, ever since the URA takeover of the Kerbal Space Program, many of the original scientists and engineers had either quit or left the country. Suddenly, the URA found itself in a pickle. It had plenty of resources to build rockets, but not enough expertise. The end result were spacecrafts too ambitious for the technologies of the time. After the URA's third failed attempt at launching a supposedly brand new state-of-the-art spacecraft, they reluctantly had to go back to the very original drawings and designs of the Kerbal Space Program. This setback, however, would give their competitors, the Allied Mountain States, a head start in the space race, launching their very first lunar spacecraft. The AMS Achilles was now well on its way to the moon. Once the news got out that the AMS had sent its first Kerbaled spacecraft to the moon, the URA had now run out of time. They had no choice but to pull out an old mothballed spacecraft that was built by the Kerbal Space Program just before the takeover. An historic event was taking place right before the world's eyes as the AMS Achilles and the URA Eagle were both racing towards the moon. Looks 
Вас понял? Да, вас понял, пока ожидаем. Экипаж НКС у нас опять не прошел. Больше по тесту никаких команд мы не выдаем. И переходим на страницу 22, ведем контроль. Принято 22 страница. Итак, экипаж МКС, так как у нас все стороны не прошел, то контроль ведем без выдачи каких-либо команд, у нас нет резерва. The crew of the Eagle were facing a possible mutiny and a court-martial, but they were willing to do what it takes in order to save another Kerbinot's life, regardless of what nation he was from. The AMS Kerbinot knew exactly what the Eagle crew was getting themselves into. Had the roles been reversed, he would also be under severe persecution for helping them out. Uh, all the extra weight and food for my craft. Uh, have you calculated? Yeah, have you that's calculated? no problem. Yeah, okay. yeah. It, it, we've got enough fuel. We're good. Yeah, we're coming up on the probe now. Uh, brace yourself for landing. When the rest of the world found out what had happened to the Kerbinauts on the dark side of the moon, all of the nations of the planet hailed the URA Kerbinauts as heroes. And while the URA government may not have approved of their actions, the citizens of the URA spoke proudly of their Kerbinauts. Time to go home, boys. The crew of the Eagle had made a dangerous gamble, but it paid off. Negotiations between nations started to open again. Treaties were signed, deals were made, 
and the AMS would send probes to the moon, while the URA would send manned missions to collect the data from those probes. While scientists and engineers were looking at ways to better control a craft through some kind of thrust vectoring and be able to dock with the craft in orbit, right now the science didn't allow for them to both research docking and, of course, thrusters. So the next best thing had to be researched, and that was the ability to make separate fuel tanks become one. No longer did you have to manually pump fuel from one fuel tank to another, but it was all done automatically now, making missions to the moon or even to other planets easier. Two of the most powerful nations on Kerbin started to work together towards a common goal for all Kerbal kind. In doing so, most of the smaller nations started to walk within their footsteps. Because of this, a type of United Nations was formed, but it wasn't a nation unto itself, more like common ground or neutral territory for other nations to come together and discuss peace treaties. The United Nations was not perfect, however and the two more larger, more powerful nations started to make rules and regulations about how smaller nations should go about building spacecrafts, subsequently barring them from doing anything great. Some of these smaller nations would challenge this authority, for they believed that all of space was meant for all of Kerbal Kind, and not just the super elite. <laughs> 